Hi, I'm Ali Camaletti, and you are listening to Snack Leadership. I will be talking about everything leadership, broken down into bite-sized pieces. You will hear what different leadership skills look like in organizations and how they can rise teams up or take them down. My hope is for you to feel inspiration and to create a spark in your mindset. Today, we are talking about authenticity. Authenticity is the quality of being real or true. I am talking with Matt Landau. He is the founder of Vacation Rental Marketing Blog and Vacation Rental Marketing Blog Communities, the largest private forum for independent vacation rental managers online offering education and collaboration. He is also known for the Vacation Rental Show and most recently has released a docu-series called Home Runners, focused on the vacation rental management industry. I know Matt from watching him speak at vacation rental management conferences over the years and listening to his podcast, Unlocked. If you're in the industry, you must check it out. Get ready to hear what authenticity is all about. Hi, Matt. I'm so excited to have you here and talk about authenticity. Authenticity is my middle name. My middle name is actually Bunting. That's a very little known fact about me. My little my middle name is Bunting and it is a family name and it is very strange. I like it. I like it. So, what has made you embrace this leadership skill of choice? I've I've frankly never looked at it as a leadership skill. I've always uh, looked at authenticity as um just kind of a tendency, something that I happen to do myself, something that I'm attracted to in other people and in other businesses and destinations when I travel. Um, It's only when you start to engineer and in a very deliberate way, authenticity into your profession, into your work, when you start to sort of tweak things and really use it um, intentionally is when I start to re- recognize that it has a leadership um, role. Um, so what made me embrace it was recognizing that it was something that I kind of had naturally. I think a lot of people have an authentic self within them. Uh, it just needs a little bit of cultivating, a little nurturing. Do you remember that moment when you realized that, oh, I've always had this. It's a value. It's embedded. And what does that look like for me in my career? I don't know if there was ever necessarily a moment. Um, I think like a lot of people, I uh, was tempted to copy people that I admired or dynamics that I was in the middle of. Uh, at certain moments in your life, you're looking for things to, to copy, and that's always easy. Um, but I've always had this kind of like uh, off the beaten path kind of attitude. And I think when I first really recognized that it could be a virtue uh, was when I moved to the historic district of Casco Viejo, Panama, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, and I bought my vacation rental company in 2006. That was the start of my vacation rental journey. Authenticity was at the center of everything that we did as the only luxury accommodations in this UNESCO World Heritage District. And seeing that people were willing to pay for that, seeing that that authenticity attracted good employees, seeing that being authentic made us small business owners that were integrated in our community. uh, That was when I think I realized I put a finger on the fact that, okay, this is actually something we need to focus on. And so when we look more at that, and you're leading us right into that next question of what does it look like when it's implemented into company cultures, can you give us a little more tangibility on how you did that and what it looked like to consumers? Yeah, I, I like to um, frame this using a concept that I call the theory of limited edition. When I first moved to the historic district, I was uh, given a tour by a local real estate broker. A uh, shout out to Patricia Pinzon of Arco Properties. Uh, But she explained to me that because this was a historic district, you could not build up or out from the original facades, that there would only ever be a fixed amount of properties 
on the Casco Viejo real estate market, which made it, in her words, a limited edition investment. And I loved the way that she framed that. And I sort of went down this limited edition rabbit hole and I started researching the world of collector's items. Antiques Roadshow is like now my favorite show. I just take notes on these most valuable objects that were not necessarily made of more expensive materials, but they were fetching such higher dollar amounts on the open market. And I began to see that there are actually some conditions that are necessary for those collector's items to fetch a high dollar amount. One is that they need to be very strictly limited in supply. Two, they need to be in good condition. Three, there needs to be a demand for that category within the marketplace. And four, there needs to be people that are able and willing to pay for them. So I saw those conditions and I started looking at how those could apply to vacation rentals as collector's items. And in our industry, vacation rental businesses are almost all limited in supply in that sense. We only have so many properties. We have this incredible demand for our category as a result of the pandemic. It's just been accelerated so much. We have all of these conditions. So it really just becomes a question of more intentionally sculpting our authentic value proposition. And, and to make a very long presentation, extremely short, I've yeah. broken those factors down into family. That's something that's authentic that cannot be replicated. Local, the fact that if you're a local, you're not based somewhere else. That's a one of a kind thing. Specialized, if you're a specialist, you are the best at your craft at one thing. And that again, cannot be mass produced. And fourth, surprises that are pleasantly woven into the experience. And if you look at those four things, family, local, specialized, and surprises, you realize that your authentic value proposition becomes, begins to come out. And if you're very, very consistent about using that as a leadership style, you begin to separate yourself from more bigger, richer, a uh, more powerful competition. And internally, you make other leaders within your groups that are channeling their authentic or limited edition self. Yeah, I love that. You have me thinking about uh, my mother who lives down in Baja the majority of the time and her vacation rentals and how she makes those authentic with my stepfather's artwork and what goes behind that of their vision to live down there the majority of the time and have made it their home and what they love about it. Yeah, yeah, love it, love it. Okay, so have you ever witnessed other companies where you're like, whoa, there's a piece missing and you were able to pinpoint that it was authenticity that was missing? And what did that feel like and look like for you? I think there's a place for uh, authenticity and authentic uh, small businesses, which is my passion. Uh, there's also a place for commodity-driven businesses um, that are more mass-produced, that are built at scale. So like, um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I don't use Amazon or uh, Whole Foods on a re very regular basis. And those are not the local, family, specialized, surprising, authentic experiences that we're talking about here. However, when I encounter a bad experience, it's almost always because that company is not authentic, whether it's just that they're not defining who they are or trying to be something for everybody um, or trying to copy uh, another competitor. It's not really true to themselves. And you could just kind of feel it. Like there's a feeling when you're interacting with a person, you could tell if they're being real or if they're kind of, you know, maybe have a, 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 an act that they're putting on. So I just tend to be attracted to the authentic types. And I know as a consumer, uh, when I have bad experiences, it's almost always because the person that I'm interacting with is not being authentic with me. And I think that's um, a cultural issue. And the best companies in, empower their employees to do that well. Uh, and the companies that struggle maybe lack it. Yeah, vacation rentals specifically is is my jam. 
And I, I work with the owners and the managers who are building limited edition vacation rental businesses. But there's also what we call big box managers in the industry who are trying to scale this personalized service or product. I know what they're trying to make consistent is a very tall ask. It's a huge challenge with all these moving parts to make a vacation rental a consistent experience no matter where you stay. But in all of the complaints, and there are plenty of them, from guests who stay in these properties um, to homeowners who are reviewing these managers and are not happy, it's almost always a case of not being true and or not being transparent and or not doing a good job. So the nearest example for our industry to see what something looks like on the other side of that limited edition or authenticity spectrum. But yeah, the, 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 the bad experiences that we have almost always, I think, are rooted in people who aren't looking out for your best interest and who aren't using their personality and their strengths uh, to do what they love. I agree with that. I was just having a conversation earlier today and we were talking about how do we really maximize and optimize on those leads that come in in a way that is still honoring our relationship building mentality without it being pushy. And one of the things that we were talking about is, you know, because there was an example of somebody had called in and they're like, yeah, I was looking at the fall, but then they started talking about 2022 as well. And I said, you know, at the end of this call, I wasn't sure. What was the final like decision? And I think that person needed a little guidance. And so it's okay to say, well, we've talked about coming up and we've talked about 2022. Where are you leaning right now? You're helping them kind of go to that place of understanding. Yeah, you're right. You know what? I need to get out of here. I really want to come this fall. Okay, awesome. So we talked about a couple of options. I'm going to follow up with you on those and just guiding them in an authentic way that isn't pushy. I love saying, I can try, I'm can. i gonna go and try to get the answer to that. I'm gonna try to fix this problem. I love admitting mistakes. That vulnerability, especially if you're a small business uh, owner or employee, it endears people to you. It gets them rooting for you, almost more so than they actually care about your success. So yeah, being open and honest about when things go wrong is another quick way to win that respect and trust. I am a big fan of, I'm going to find out for you. Yeah. This is my commitment to you. Saying that I'm going to partner with you on this. And it's not fake because you are, you're partnering with them on this process. Because as we know, there's a lot of moving parts in this industry. And that's what makes it so much fun with vacation rentals. Yeah, I love partnerships. Anything you want to share before I ask you about your leadership mentor? I just think that everybody has this kind of authenticity within them. And if you're listening to this and you haven't put a finger on it yet, ask a friend or a colleague what to them uh, makes you an authentic employee or professional, and then use that honest feedback to continue doing it over and over again. It's within you. It's not something that you need to pay to acquire. So true. Yeah. Okay, so do you have any favorite leadership mentors? I'm going to stick with this um, running narrative. Uh, when I first moved to that neighborhood, Casco Viejo, and this real estate agent, Patricia, and her husband, KC, kind of welcomed me into their developing neighborhood. They, for me, embodied everything about a community leader that I could aspire to be. Um, they're very savvy business people. They're in real estate and they're in development and now they're in hospitality as well. But the majority of their time is spent doing community things that are not directly correlated with their bottom line. But if you trace those steps back enough, you realize that if they're contributing so frequently, making the place that they live better by solving the problems themselves, like literally Patricia's out every morning picking up trash on the beach. KC, mind you, he thinks that she's crazy because she can't help herself <laughs> from picking up every piece of trash anywhere she goes. But for me, that stepping up and doing is a huge part of being able to command respect. When other people see you, let's say, picking up trash, it, that's how social change happens. If, you, if they see it enough, they'll start to consider doing it themselves. 
And that, that couple, that power couple for me, I've always looked up to them as mentors because they are leaders and they do for that community, that neighborhood. I have since left, but they do for that destination what I think all of us could do for our organizations. And it's not easy, doesn't happen overnight. In fact, most of it is uphill. Their favorite uh, icon is the Sisyphus character pushing the rock up the hill, but doing so with a smile on his face. And that's what I think they have taught me, that there is a beauty in that struggle. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. All right, how about a quote that you really feel embodies authenticity? That's a good question. And I, and I was looking through my quote section of my iPhone, and I found one that I thought was a good fit here. It's talking about genius, but I think if you, if you replace genius with authenticity, it's very fitting. It says, but it isn't magic and it isn't born. It happens because some critical things line up so that a person of good intelligence can put in the sustained, focused effort it takes to achieve extraordinary mastery. I view everything we've just talked about in the last 15 minutes in a similar way. If you're constantly refining that authentic narrative or leadership style, it's a life process, but it's also incredibly fulfilling. You make progress over time, and it's something that attracts, moving back to that analogy of collector's items, people who admire and respect you. And when you work with those kinds of people, it makes your life better. Do you know who said that quote? I do know who said that quote. Author was Thomas Opong. So what is your favorite snack? Olives and second place is salted, crunchy little things like nuts or crackers. Those two things, if, if anybody knows me, they'll, they'll know that I love snacking on little crunchy, salty things and olives almost any time of the day or night. That's great. <laughs> Thank you, Matt, so much for your time and your expertise. It has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for inviting me, Allie. Have a nice day. You as well. Thank you for tuning in to Snack Leadership. I hope you felt inspiration, motivation, and felt your mindset spark. Snack Leadership is recorded and produced by myself, Ali Camaletti, and music by Shireen Amini. Mm-hmm.